Allison, I'm going over the response that the Daily Texan editor-in-chief Claire Smith sent to you. So you noted the vast disparity between the number of anti-campus carry pieces compared to the number of pro-campus carry pieces. You submitted a column and this most bizarre response was sent back to you. What did you make of that? Um, I can tell you that I was too surprised. I'm a conservative student at a very liberal college campus. Um, but I was kind of surprised in that there were pro-campus carry pieces that had been published, so I don't know why mine would be treated any differently. Right. Um, but there is a huge disparity between pro-campus carry pieces and anti-campus carry pieces. And it seems as though that the, it seems as though that definitely the editorial staff there is not in favor of campus carry, particularly with the way that they were asking you to prove a negative in their response to you, which I found entertaining. Yeah, um, that it was interesting because um, my column did not in any way pr make a prediction of exactly what will happen. It's just an analysis of what could happen. So a lot of the anti-campus carry pieces made some similar claims for anti-carry groups. Um, and I just made a pro-campus carry argument. So it was interesting um, that a negative would right. be... And you, uh, you had even written a column, inclusiveness is the key to a vital daily Texan as well. Are you going to continue submitting op-eds to the paper there? Uh, I would like to. Um, I think the only way to the, the way to get it published is to just keep up the good fight, keep submitting, um, and hope that eventually one of them will be accepted. I mean, and, and at UT Austin, I mean, I know, as you were saying, it's, you know, it's a very liberal area, but I mean, surely... Uh, and, and the, the campus, uh, the campus culture is, is quite liberal as well. Um, but surely uh, they understand, as you were writing about in your column here, that you know diversity, particularly with a natural right like this, I mean, it's incredibly important. I mean, uh, they're, they're, the, the arguments that I have seen made against campus carry are that you're an adult going to college, you're, you're totally, you're an adult, you're responsible, you can handle your student loans, et cetera, et cetera. But then when it gets down to whether or not you're responsible enough to carry, suddenly every student who is on campus is devolved down to that of a toddler who can't be trusted with a firearm. Oh yeah, I totally agree. And, um, you know, we've had concealed carry at UT for 20 years now. SB 11 simply extends that into buildings. Um, so very easily there are CHL holders walking around campus with a concealed weapon, just not entering buildings. Um, so it is interesting that you, you are immediately reduced down to a toddler as soon as we come to the issue of guns. Right. And I mean, you know, just just having met you only this way, I mean, you seem like a responsible adult. I would completely trust you carrying a firearm. And I'm sure that you would trust other responsible adults. It's not like, you know, and I'm sure that you've made this point, when people purchase firearms, they don't do that expecting magically all of the knowledge about shooting and everything about that firearm to be transferred to them, like out of some Harry Potter movie. Correct. Yeah, I totally agree. And, you know, it's, it is interesting. It's a similar concept to, you know, if you if you buy a car when you buy a car, you are going to have to learn how to put gas in the car. You're going to have to learn how to drive the car. Um, you're going to have to learn how to keep, maintain the car. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it, it is kind of absurd to immediately reduce grown adults down to this super immature level. And it is concerning the image that the anti-gun people are painting of CHL holders here at UT.